Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on this next video. Today I'd like to share with you a very cool maquette, the Albertosaurus from the Discovery Channel documentary, When Dinosaurs Roamed America. I'm excited to show you a close-up view of this amazing model and then dive into how traditionally sculpted dinosaur models were used to produce the creatures featured in this documentary. Released in 2001, this documentary was hosted by John Goodman, who also played Fred Flintstone in the 1994 movie, The Flintstones. The end credits of this documentary showcased an all-star lineup of sculptors. Unfortunately, they incorrectly spelled Mike Tursik's name. Mike Tursik was the paleo artist behind sculpting the Albertosaurus. You may recognize Mike as he is well known for sculpting the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Since then, Mike has gone on to sculpt some breathtaking dinosaurs that were available in bronze and resin model kits. He also creates beautiful sculptures of inspiring images of the Old West. I'd love to do a full history on Mike, however, I'm saving that for a future video. This maquette came in six pieces of resin. Here's a few shots of the model before assembly. I am a huge fan of Mike's work, ever since I watched the making of Jurassic Park on VHS, so it's a great honor for me to house this model in my collection. I had commissioned Shane Folks, a world-class paleo artist, sculptor, and painter, to assemble and paint this model. And oh boy, was I in for a treat. Here's a closer look at the model, and immediately we're hit with such a strong presence with a beautiful paint job. Let's start with the head. What a cool sculpt. Shane installed glass taxidermy eyes to give it a more lifelike appearance. The model sports some classic spot patterns with some intimidating teeth peeking out over the bottom jaw. As we hit the neck and body area, we can see Mike's signature cross-hatching sculpting style. Mike did mention that paleontologist Robert Backer once informed him that T-Rex skin may have looked leathery or like the bark of a tree. I feel Mike captured this look very nicely. Here are the tiny Tyrannosaur arms with fantastic work on the claws. The blend of colors are masterfully done. One thing you'll notice is how well Shane paints patterns. The patterns aren't harsh with thick paint, but more naturalistic and subtly built up. One thing that struck me were how long the legs were, but after taking a close look at the skeletal, I realized it's quite accurate. What was surprising is how well this maquette balances on its own. Let's progress down the tail with more beautiful naturalistic sculpting. I also want to give you a quick shot of the front view and top view. As detailed as this sculpt may look, Mike informed me that it was just the base model and that when the model was input into the computer, they would add the real texture detail. Regardless, the detail is amazing. Now, this model is sculpted in what I'd like to call a neutral pose, similar to that of the Jurassic Park maquettes, the Walking with Dinosaur maquettes, and I'll be honest, I'm a sucker for these neutral poses. I'm not sure what it is, I guess I grew up seeing a lot of dinosaur maquettes and toys in these neutral stances, and I just love it. I know some may find it static or boring, but hey, to each their own, right? Mike was kind enough to share some shots during the sculpting process. Keep in mind, these were sculpted over 20 years ago, so we're very fortunate to have these images. If you haven't watched When Dinosaurs Roamed America, here's a little secret. It's free on YouTube. So make sure you check it out, link in the description below. But if you have, you may be asking, hey, there was no Albertosaurus featured, and you'd be correct. This character was cut from the final version. Mike speculates that it may have been cut because it looked too similar to the juvenile T-Rex. And I think Mike may be correct. Here are some screenshots of the juvenile T-Rex. This also makes me wonder what other dinosaurs may have been cut from the final documentary. Now I have a special treat for all of you. I was able to obtain a few more images of other maquettes featured in this documentary. From Mike, we have this wonderful Ceratosaurus that was featured in scenes with the Dryosaurus and Stegosaurus. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing and giving this video a like as it would really help out the channel. Mike also showcased a unique half Allosaurus sculpted on a mirror. This Allosaurus was a last minute sculpt, and in the interest of deadlines, Mike sculpted it on top of a mirror so that the reflection would make a full image of the dinosaur. Max Salas, another paleo artist and a very nice guy overall, 
sent me images of the Dromaeosaurus maquette featured in the documentary. Max mentioned that these raptor models were used several times by Discovery and may be the very first feathered raptors ever featured in a documentary. I may be wrong about that, so if you know, please leave a comment below. Obtaining maquettes used in film is quite the challenge, but if you're enjoying this content, you might want to check out my Jurassic Park T-Rex maquette video, the very first video I ever made on YouTube. I also am fortunate enough to own one more model. I'll give you a sneak peek. Can you guess what it is? If you can, leave a comment down below. Now back to when dinosaurs roamed America. I also spoke with the documentary's art director, Mark DeBeau, who was generous enough to share some background information. Now here's a shocking fact. I had always assumed that these maquettes were digitally scanned into the computer, much like how they were in Jurassic Park and Walking with Dinosaurs. However, it turns out these models were photographed and a team of artists and animators used these photos as reference to digitally replicate them as best they could. So, there was no scanning involved at all. Quite interesting. There were quite a few people who provided insight for this video, including Mario Gearse, whose team at Film Production and Distribution did all the on-scene location shots in Patagonia. Here are some of the location shots, along with images of storyboarding. Let's fast forward to present day, where we're fortunate enough to be getting some of the highest quality dinosaur documentaries in Prehistoric Planet. Gone are the days of physical models being scanned to create the creatures we see on screen as digital sculpting has taken over. But I can't help but admire the work of the past and the long process it took to create these classic documentaries. I want to give a special thank you to all the artists and creators that provided information and photos to create this video. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving it a like and a share as it would really help out the channel. Thanks so much for dropping by.